Professor Gregory Sadler has just done an interesting video uh, where he's going through painstakingly Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics and talking about contemplation. Now, contemplation is something that really fascinates me, and it's unclear what people actually mean by it when they use the term. Um, Schopenhauer talks, I think, about aesthetic contemplation, i.e. contemplating beauty. Um, and I tend to like the term contemplation because it's one of the forks in the road I find in terms of philosophy. Let's say that you read something profound that fascinates you and really puts the hook in you. Um, as I say, a lot of people find Schopenhauer does that to them. He sort of takes the blinders off the, or the cuts right to the chase and they say, ah, now I see what he's talking about and I am a Schopenhauerian or I've been heavily influenced by him to the point where I'm, I'm convinced that he kind of explains things the best way that I can imagine. Okay, what next? What do you do with that? Um, Nietzsche, I think, also has that effect on people. Nietzsche kind of grabs you by the throat and says, think, damn you, think, 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 and look, look, look yourself square in the mirror and don't avert your gaze when looking right at yourself. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, that's quite a challenge, but what does that mean? Um, what does it mean to sort of know thyself or to um, try and figure out what you are? Um, I would assume that's what contemplation is. It's just sort of going over and trying to understand through all your faculties in the most thorough way. In other words, you want to understand it intellectually and emotionally, rationally as well as intuitively, um, what the world is and what you are. Um, and the interesting thing about that is uh, Western philosophy with Possibly, I might say possibly the exception of Nietzsche, uh, seems to say, okay, you've discovered this, now you've just discovered it. Okay, now you know. Okay, now what? Well, you just wait to die. Um, I think that's what a lot, why a lot of people sort of don't really make it in philosophy, like they don't really go any further, because once these truths are, or what they believe are truths are revealed to them, they sort of say, okay, now I've discovered whatever it is, now what? It's like the Lovecraftian view of things. I found out that the world is horrifying and there's nothing else to do except for me, except for, to, for me to go insane. Um, the, uh, I, I asked the question, what is mysticism of a certain kind? In particular, meditation. Um, I do meditation, I do hatha yoga. I even do a mantra meditation. My son likes, I have those little Indian symbols called manjira, and he likes it when I ding, 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 ding away, and we chant silly Indian mantras. Just, I guess, just something to do, father and son bonding, really. Uh, my evangelical Christian wife doesn't really think that that's any big deal, and cause she just sort of rolls her eyes at the whole thing. But what are you actually doing there? You're going beyond merely intellectualizing your your speculations. You're trying to, as it were, go laterally with it all. You want to, or holistically, or spatially. You want to understand your own convictions in every possible way. Um, you want to uh, use all your faculties to understand and perhaps be shaped by your philosophizing. You want it to actually change you. Um, I think that, that, to me, is where you where the fanatic and the true contemplative sort of part company. The fanatic reaches this state of, wow, now I see everything clearly. Then the fanatic goes around trying to get everybody else to follow, in, follow suit because there's nothing further to be done here. There's something Wahhabist about this where you don't really try and figure, speculate as to the nature of Allah. You don't really try and experience God consciousness or anything like this. That's Sufism. It's kind of the left-handed version of Islam, which may actually be more common in Islam than anything even remotely resembling Wahhabism, but that's another subject entirely. But, you know, the difference between somebody who goes around trying to preach the gospel as opposed to someone who just searches for the beatific vision inside of himself, a monk in his cell versus the, uh, the Martin Luther thundering in front of crowds, um, you know, it, it strikes me as though the one really isn't that much of a believer anymore as he is a doer. 
um, how do you do philosophy, or is philosophy something you be? It's often said in Canada that the English Canadians are all about doing things, getting results, whereas the French are all about being. Now, that's kind of a generalization, but in some senses it, I, I find that it's true. Um, English people are results-driven, and it's all about overcoming obstacles, whereas the French idea is first you overcome the obstacles in order to be, whereas to the English, overcoming obstacles is an end in itself. In that sense, I suppose one would say that the English are more fanatical than the French Canadians, if you actually take that point of view. But it makes you think, though, I've done all this rumination, now what? What do I do with it all?